For the next 30 minutes, we will explore the unexplained. From mysteries beyond our galaxy, to ghostly phenomena in our own backyard, we will dive into our psychic abilities and explore everything from conspiracies to the just plain weird. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. If the truth is out there, we will find it. But only by sheer accident. Hey! <laughs> Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. How are you? We're live from Derby Jail in England. Check it out behind me. We're in a cell in prison. It's going to be a great show. We're going to talk British. We've got a clip of the week that you don't want to miss at the end. Unbelievable stuff. We're going to check it out. Uh, but we're going to get a little British tonight. So uh, we're going to learn a few things. And, uh, and I also want to remind everybody, if you're watching the show live at 30oddminutes.com, you can join our chat room. These folks over here will help you out if you have questions. These folks, there they are. If you have questions, you can ask them in the chat room, and they will pass them on up to us and our guest. It's just going to be an awesome show. So uh, we understand you don't have a lot of time. Neither do we. That's why you watch 30 Odd Minutes. You like your paranormal and nice, neat packages wrapped up in, in just a little over 29 minutes. But sometimes even that's too much. That's why we've got a new clip for you, 30 Odd Seconds. Check this out. 30 Odd Seconds. Nineteen-year-old Mercy Lena Brown was exhumed from this holding crypt on March 17, 1892, aged 19 years old. Her heart and liver were removed, burned on a nearby rock, mixed with her brother's medicine. Her brother was ailing. He consumed the ashes, but unfortunately he died less than two months later. She's known as America's last vampire and partly an inspiration for Bram Stoker's novel, Dracula. Hey, nicely done, nicely done. 30 seconds, that's all we ask. Just be succinct. Maybe one time uh, someone's not going to make it. We'll see. That'll be the fun of that bit. Uh, we got another email this week, which is great. We appreciate all the words. Keep them coming. You can email us at info at 30oddminutes.com. Dear Jeff, greetings. It's Dr. Dreck. Don't know if that's a PhD or an MD. Have to check. I love your show, warts and all. Yeah, how it goes. And watch it every week. One subject that has plenty of books written about it, but I haven't seen much TV coverage, is werewolves. Ooh, very good. So uh, I recall reading books years ago about uh, an English lycanthropy in modern times. Didn't physically transform. Is uh, I think it's something that you and your crew probably know a lot more about. <laughs> you assume a lot, Dr. Dreck. But would love to see you cover it. Thanks. That is a good idea. We should get yeah. to that. Werewolves. 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 We can get to that. All right. But this week we're going to go British. We're going to talk about Darby Jail. Now, if you want to impress your friends and talk like a Brit, we're going to help you out with some pronunciation. Here's what it looks like. Looks like Derby Gowl, but it's not. It's pronounced Darby Jail, and we're going to have a little help from that. And, and who better to talk about it? This is a place that saw 58 brutal executions, so much history, one of the most haunted places in all of England. And, uh, and we've got just the guy to talk about it tonight, Richard Felix. But first, let's take a quick look at a, a DVD he's put together about this haunted jail. Great stuff. Richard Felix, he's an author, historian, lecturer, 
Perhaps he's best known for his role on the hit TV show Most Haunted. He's investigated haunts all over the world, and uh, he's the owner of Derby Jail in, uh, in Derby, England. Live from our studios in Great Britain, Richard, can you hear me? I can indeed, Jeff, yes. Oh, wonderful, great. Well, uh, the connection looks good. I knew you were green. I think I always knew you were green. Yeah, it's all that most haunted, but you know, reception's not very good. It would be far better, you know, if I just came out of this door and came and joined you. What? What? Oh. Hello there. Hey, Richard Felix. How you doing? Doing good. You, you got here quick. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, it was a quick jet. Wow, oh, man, yes. this is great. Our, our first guest in the studio. Really? It's a pleasure to have you. Hey. Yes. Well, you know, uh, Am I really physically here. Hey, thanks, guys. <laughs> great. So you're not green. Nope. We've well, proved that. Well, a little no, bit. No, I'm not. A little bit. But, but the, the pizza was, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was great. So, so let's start with, with Darby Jail. Mm. There, we are here in the cell. Thank you for having oh, us in your, yeah. in your cell. Yeah, it's That's what they tell me. That's what <laughs> this DVD that I watched mm. told me. So talk to me, how'd you first hear about it? Oh God, I've been, I've been doing ghost walks around Derby, England for 17 years, and I knew all about that place. Right. Uh, and then it was a club, a uh, nightclub, and I took it over when they, they left. Um, knowing how haunted it was, uh, renovated it, stripped the walls, put everything back as it was and started doing ghost tours um, from Derby Jail. And some of the things you wouldn't believe that have happened over the years. Well, let's, let's start with the history. How old is this? Place? 1756, okay. second of three county jails. So Dar Derby Derbyshire had a county jail. So if you committed a crime, then you were brought to the, the, the county jail in, in Derby. Tried, um, sentenced, and then of course executed right. at the jail. Um, we should take a look at this place. This is a, it's, yeah. it's a scary place. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, so, yeah, so what kind of crimes would people oh, commit well, to get into? Listen, from 1800, there were 200 hanging offences in Great Britain. Oh, wow. You could be hanged for murder, um, rape, attempted rape, burglary, um, setting fire to haystacks. Oh my um, God. Appearing on the street with a sooty face. They were all hanging offences. Um, and in, in 1817, we hanged four guys in front of the jail for setting fire to a haystack. Oh my God. In the same year, we hanged and beheaded three fellas for high treason, which was England's last revolution. We hanged a girl of 16 for murder. Uh, terror, torment, you right. name it, it's, it's, it's all in that place. And there's something about prisons, isn't there? I mean, when you think about it, first of all, we don't put good people in prisons, typically. Correct. Although, yeah. debtors, sometimes just down, yeah, down on their Yeah, a lot of people were in prison for debt and right. couldn't get out until they paid the debts. Right. You, and you how do you do that? that? Well, you have to work while you're in there. Right. Uh, and there's a day room, there was a fire, a big window, so right. that you could actually do work and then sell stuff. And so like when a, you... a good internet connection. Oh, oh absolutely, right. You right, need that. Right. Yeah. Then you had to pay the jailer right. before you left for extra straw in the mattress and to knock the chains off. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there were terrible times. So so this is not a good place. No. This is not a place you'd not. want to go. You. Yes, you would. Unless now. Yes, you would. Now you would, right? <laughs> right, now you would. And, and so, uh, I mean, of course, with, with the tragedy, with the torment, with people that are... are just at their lowest of lows and maybe waiting execution. Hauntings. Hauntings. Yeah. And right. of course the thing you must remember with all prisons that they're all full of sinners. Right. And sinners believe that, we're, that they were going to burn in hell. And so they chose to stay rather than move on. People weren't frightened of death. Right. They were frightened of the afterlife. And so they're still here. Right. And the only way some of them can ever leave these places, you know, is by following you home. Yeah. When the doors open. And we get people actually getting in touch with us afterwards, saying that they think something's actually travelled in the car, come home with them. No kidding. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a, a frightening place. And, and surrounded by stone bricks, as, yeah. as we know. I mean, yeah. we can see these places. Stone tape theory. I My, know you're, you're a big uh, fan. Yes, very big fan of both stone and brick. And, and of course, the red of the sandstone, the red of the bricks. Sorry, don't interrupt. You. Is that the gallows? Is That's that the right? gallows. That's yes, the gallows indeed. Right? But it wouldn't have been there. It would have been in front of the building. Right. And all executions in England till 1868 were public, as sure. I think it was similar in, in America. Wow. So it had a huge crowd of they people. They didn't have cable. They didn't That's have cable. Well, no, there was, right. there was nothing else to get back for, so they stayed right. for an execution. Right. And the more convulsed you were, the longer it took you to die, yeah. the more the crowd loved it. Right, of course. Which is awful again and you could you do realize that it could take anything up to a quarter of an hour right to die of slow strangulation yeah, because these, these aren't snapping the oh neck, we're not right? talking of a trap door breaking of the neck until right. much later we're talking of very slow strangulation unless the executioner had a few bob given to him and then he'd climb up the ladder go along and stand on your shoulders and with friends like that pull down and, yeah uh, yeah oh my goodness that's why you had a white cap over your face right because of the eyes bulging and popping out and Bleeding from every old... Yes. This is, uh, is this a family this show, is great. by the way? No, it wasn't. <laughs> they all went to bed. Oh, that's all right. No, yeah. don't worry about yeah. that. Yeah, horror 
terror and torment like you would Plus, as you've just said, the stone tape theory, which of course holds the... You can, can you see how red some of that sandstone is? Back here? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that way. <laughs> OK. Look how red the sandstone is. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. I see that's that. because of the iron oxide that's in it. Get this window here. Yes. How do you do that? <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's why the recordings are there, because of the iron oxide in the sandstone. Right. Uh, just Russ, like a metal tape. Thank you. Right. Exactly. And it, it, it records the, the trauma and the terror that's gone on in, the, in those cells, which are still there. How do we play it back? You have to be on the right frequency at the right time. OK. That's all it is, because it's forever playing in that sandstone right, that there. Right, yeah. um, Forever playing, but you just have to be, in fact, hang on a minute, there's radio stations coming through here now. Sure. But you need a receiver. Right. You need to tune it to the right frequency. Right. And that's what we are up here. Yeah, yeah. Receiver, recorder, transmitter, video player, satellite navigation system, phones, everything. Tune in, and all of a sudden this figure just appears for a few seconds. Right. And then it's vanished. But can, can everyone tune in? Is this? Yeah. You have to be on the right frequency. You right. have to be emotionally charged, upset, excited by something, and then it just changes right. momentarily, and you just see these, these figures again. But it's not an intelligence. OK. It's nothing but a recording. Right. It okay. can't interact with you. Do you believe that there can be an intelligent mm. interactive? Yeah. OK. Oh, God, yeah. Different yeah. Then. That's, okay. that's totally different side of it. That's the intelligence, the spirit, the soul that has either chosen to stay because it wants to, uh, it doesn't know it's dead, or it's terrified to move on because of hellfire and damnation. Right. And the fear of what's going to happen to them. And so they, they, they choose to stay. They know you're there. They can interact with you. And, and sometimes, of course, they do. Right. But I don't believe that they're, they're particularly bad. I, I, I don't believe that the, the profession of a ghost is there to scare you. OK. We're scared because we see it. We don't understand what it is. Right. In my opinion. Right. But whether that's a fact. But then again, we go looking for this stuff, don't we? We want the scare factor, yeah, Jeff. Right. That's the difference. Everybody, you know, if you went on a theme park, you wouldn't go on the, 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 the one that went round and round and round and round. You'd go the one that takes you 20,000 feet and drops you right. 10,000 square feet per second to the ground. <gasps> yeah. Yeah? Because yeah. that's what we want. Of course. And we right. want this with ghosts, and that's why ghost programs give us this. Yeah, of course they do. And, and so have you had an experience in this place? Yes. I saw a ghost at 20 past 3 on a Friday afternoon. Broad daylight. Right. I was on the phone, not thinking ghosts. Uh, and all of a sudden, this grey shape of a person glided down the corridor past me. Right. Uh, I sensed it, and I, and I saw it, and I swore because it frightened me to death when I saw it. And, right. And then it vanished. But I'm not talking of a brief second. I'm talking about four seconds going past me. Right. Uh, and it was dense and grey, and the person shape, but neither male nor female. And then it was gone. My goodness. Then I was gone. Ah! Because I'm frightened of ghosts. And you're in there all the time. Oh, yeah. But not on my own. Well, not right. Normally. OK. Because I don't like it in there <laughs> on my own, really. But here's the thing that I've always thought with, with ghost experiences. People that are most likely to have the experience, live yes. there, work there, they put in the time. Yeah, exactly. You may go and you may spend an hour. You might see something. It's not impossible. No, 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 that's right. But the odds are simply with... Yeah, yeah, I mean, the ghosts do not appear to audiences. They don't jump through hoops. They don't right. do what we tell them to do, in my opinion. Right. Uh, and you just have to be in the right frame of mind, usually daydreaming, okay. usually with an open mind. Yeah, come on, keep going, and then all of a sudden something may appear. Oh, so did you say something? No. Yeah. <laughs> you need an open mind. Right. In the same way as, let's be honest, a dog or a cat has, because they've got nothing else in their minds to think about. Right. You know, that's why I always Squirrel. say, well, why, does, why does an elephant <laughs> never forget? It's right. got nothing to remember. <laughs> right. um, and so it's minds open. When your mind's totally open and you're walking down the street daydreaming or not thinking of anything, all of a sudden something, it happens. You yeah. see it, and then it's gone. And right. then you, reality kicks in, and of course your mind starts thinking, oh, I'm frightened. Right. And then you lose it. And that's, what I th that's why children see ghosts. 35% of children under the age of six have imaginary friends, right. as we call them. I have a few now. So do I. <laughs> are, they, are they here with us? Yeah, but I've never grown up. <laughs> All right, uh, very good. But I, I mean <laughs> it. It's a, because basically there's nothing in children's minds right. other than when are we going out to play, what time's tea, don't send me to bed yet. Right. But as soon as they get to school and they start cramming, right. They're, they're filling it full of some other, other things, you see. So that's what, it's, that's what it's all about. Great. Well, we do have a question from the chat room. Uh -huh. Do tell. We do. There's sure. actually a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, mostly people want to know basically what the difference is that you've seen, Richard, in, say, paranormal activity in the U.S. versus the U.K. Because the perception is that you have, well, cooler ghosts for the most <laughs> part and a more of them. And so they just want to know, like, what has been your experience with that? Great. Ba basically, there are very big difference. In England, we have older buildings. Sure. We have a lot more sandstone buildings, granite buildings. 
you have mainly wood buildings. Right. And, and I believe that, that in England we have far more ghosts because people are seeing um, recording ghosts, right, that don't interact, that can't interact, that's a recording in the fabric of the building. Right. Uh, whereas over here I believe that you have far more of an, what I call an intelligence ghost that, that is in the building because it wants to be, because it, it knows about the building and it wants to stay. And, and a prime example of that is... Wait a minute. Yes. American ghosts are smarter than British ghosts? Yes. <laughs> USA! Yeah, yeah, USA. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. <laughs> I, I, and to, to, to really add to it, uh, when we did Most Haunted, I went down to the Whaley House. Yeah, sure, now, San Diego. That yeah. Whaley House is the most haunted house in California. If you guess, believe the t-shirt. Guess what? What? It's the oldest brick built building in California. Sure, yeah. So in other words, there are far more recording ghosts in the building. Right than there are in a, in, a, in a house that just has one ghost that's resident because it's chosen to stay because it liked the house. Right. That's what I think. You know what's great about the Whaley story too? I, I lo haunted, allegedly, from the first week. Yeah. Uh, it's written in the journal, Mr. Whaley, because that's where the public hangings took place, right on that property. Exactly. Uh, Yankee Jim Robinson, too tall for yes, the, for the yes. rope, <gasps> and, uh, and had a very long suffocation. Uh, and, and Whaley wrote in his journal that the first week he was hearing bootsteps up in his brand new house. Uh -huh. and, and so people always think, you know, uh, the house has to be centuries old, it has to be in England, it has to be a castle. No. no. no far from it. Yeah. But again, I, I also, because there's lots more recorded sightings right. and, and sounds in the building, and I think some of those are to do with the fact that it's an old brick-built building that holds the magnetic recording in the building. In fact, a brick, a brick building is exactly the same as your credit card. It's full of bars of magnetism, right. negatives and positives that hold a memory. Your credit card holds a memory, a brick wall holds a memory in exactly the same way. This, this brick wall. <laughs> it's still there. It's still there. Yeah. <laughs> in, but I mean, it's only a theory. Yeah, But of I course. think it's a possibility. That's why these ghosts that we see don't interact with us. Because it's no different to dropping a screen down here now and, and watching a, a John Wayne film. Right. Would we all run from the building and say, oh my God, it's the ghost of John Wayne. Yeah. No, it's right. not. It's a recording. Right. End of. Yeah. I think. Right, right. Now, getting back to, to Derby Jail, mm. what, what, are, what are other people experiencing inside? Oh, all sorts of stuff. All the, I mean, we, we have people, we do events, we do sleepovers, but nobody ever sleeps, of course. <gasps> there he is. Can't imagine who that is. Yeah. Uh, ah. uh, we do sleepovers, we do vigil, night vigils, we have ghost walks most nights. And we, we have a lot of ladies, because ladies love, love the ghosts, and yeah. the, the, the husband comes. Uh, and they've only come because there's a bar. They're looking for the spirits behind the bar, you see. Very good. And the they building. find them. Yeah, they find them. Yeah. But afterwards, we get emails back from the, 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 the husband. I didn't believe in any of this right. until I came to Derby Jail. And, and, and after witnessing what happened that night, with, with seances, with tables moving across the floor, with people seeing things being touched on the shoulder and, and hearing things and EVP and all. Oh, come on. Um, it, it's probably the most haunted building in Britain. Right. Um, why? It's because it's in Derby, which is the most haunted city in Great Britain. Right. Uh, but you're partial. Like, well, I, I created it. Ah, there you go. I was chairman of Derby Tourism for oh, four good. years. Comes clean right here. Well, you have to. Thank you very but much. But I didn't make it up. No. It's, it's right. all, it's all fine. I can't prove any of it. Sure. You really, I mean, I can't get my fingers close enough to give you any proof. Look, they're touching. Yeah. That's how much proof right. there is of ghosts. That's right. Bring us one now. We can't. Well, that's next, on, next week's show. Is it? Yeah, you should hang around. It's going to be big. I will still be here. All right. All right. Very good. <laughs> yeah. No, well, speaking of most haunted. Mm, okay. Now, why not? Why not? What, after being on a show like that, how does that affect you as an investigator, your ability to now step out of that limelight? Yeah, and I stepped out um, because I wanted to, to create. I'm, I'm working on programs that are dealing with reality. <laughs> oh. uh, in, in the ghost world. Okay. Uh, in other words, I, I, if we're sat here now and a door slams shut, um, I, want to have be, I want to tick the normal boxes first, right. every one of them. When I come to the end of it, if there's a box that's not ticked, then I start thinking paranormal. Sure. But basically, there's much more likely that that door slams shut because someone left a window open and it's a windy night. <laughs> right. Uh, right. And that's where I, I'm coming from. Because I believe that the reality behind ghosts is far more fascinating Right. than the Scooby-Doo side of ghosts <laughs> that we're seeing on, on some TV programs and also on Hollywood. Yeah, But I, I know we need the scare factor, sure. and I know that they're entertainment programs, but I believe there's room for a program that gives it you as it is and explains what it's all about. Do you think there's also room for a program like 30-odd minutes? I'm sure there's a very good room for 30. In fact, yeah, I think we should have it in England as well. Oh, well we, we can get it, can we? We can make some, yeah, internet. 
internet. Yeah. It's available yeah. online. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, this is, yeah. This is online. <laughs> so it should be right. And it's live and, and live no and holds bars. No mis mistakes and all. You've seen them. No, no bars. Yeah. Hold, yeah, right. Yeah, point okay. in the wrong direction. <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> so, so now, but now, I mean, but books, of course. Books. You're, you're an author. I know yes. I've got some of your books. You've got a new book. We'll I've talk about that yours. momentarily. I know we did. We met on the Queen. Yes, right? indeed. Yeah. We trade. So, but a, a, as authors have been doing this for centuries, writing right? books, w writing books about yes. ghosts. Um, I mean, gosh, look, look at but the chronicling of it. How do you tell a ghost story? And now we've got new mediums. We've got television, but DVDs where you can control. The content yes, in books. Indeed. How do you approach a ghost story? Like, let's just start with you, you heard of a legend. How do you how do you attack that legend? How do I attack it? You attack it, Richard. Well, King. I mean, I, I first look for the reality because you see, I believe that history and ghosts go together. Sure. I'm not interested in there's a grey lady over there. I'm interested in why that. Can you see it? I thought you saw yeah. a grey lady. Oh my God! You can't do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very yeah. gullible. I want to know why that grey lady is there. That one. Oh right. Who is she? Can we get a mic on her? What? what? <laughs> come on, this come in, love. Come on, come on in and talk to us. Yeah. Why is she there? Who is she? What happened right. to her? What caused her to still be here? Why is she grey? Right. Why isn't she pink? Blue, yellow, green, and and of course the big one that most people never think about. What can we do for her? Right. Well, why should we want to do anything? It's a ghost. No, it's not. It was once a human being. That that, that is probably an intelligence that for some reason has an agenda, which has actually kept it here. Right. And it shouldn't be here. It should be up there, down there. This this level, this plane, this dimension, this frequency, you know, it should be elsewhere. Right. And it's not. And we owe them something. Right. I think to find out more about what they are. So for me, it's a case of going into the history of of, of the haunting first, rather than, oh, it's a scary ghost. Right. That's not, I'm not bothered about that. I am, because I'm frightened of them. But I, I want to know why they're there. And then you can get to the bottom of, of well, what you can do about it. Right. Including possibly if if it needs to be sent send send it on its way, and can can you do that? Yeah, I think so. If it's an intelligence right. and it's chosen to stay, and it can interact with you, then you can interact with it. All right, and you can help it. The, the old lady that stays in the house, talk to her and tell her, look, love, this is my house now. I I pay the mortgage. <laughs> you you, right. you shouldn't really be here, but if you want to stay, do. Don't bother the kids. Stay out the bedroom at night. Because she's the intelligence that's chosen to stay because she loved that house. Right. So why can't we interact with them if they know that they're still there? Right. Talk to them, preferably on your own. Right. Because people are going to laugh at you. Yeah. But it, but, and I swear to you, it works. Yeah. Tell them that there's, there is no judgment day, that we judge ourselves, and that if we want to move on, we can. But they daren't because they're terrified of divine retribution, hellfire, damnation. Seven deadly sins, ten commandments, purgatory, keep going, all the things that we've, right. we've terrified people with for 2,000 years. Sure. And they're, they're, they're terrified to move. They need help. We're talking of an intelligence that, that needs possibly to move on. Very good. And well, so that's what, I, that's what I go into. Yeah. And, and Reality. And it's, it's a great approach. I think history has to set the stage for these things yeah. because then it's just out of, it's out of context. Yeah, you're, exactly. watching, you're watching something completely out of context. Yeah, yeah. We do have another question in the chat room. Sarah, please tell us. Um, so they are wondering if you've noticed any difference in the frequency of entities that passed a long time ago versus ones who have just recently passed and if that changes the way that you're able to communicate with them. That's a very good point. Frequencies, um, I, I tell you what I do think, and this is probably more with with a with a recording that if if this recording is continually playing then the longer the recording playing the worse the quality gets right it's the same as playing your favorite video the more you play it the worse the quality gets sure and so the, the red lady of the 16th century becomes the pink lady of the 17th century and the gray lady of the 18th century until it almost or possibly completely fades away and all you hear are a few footsteps and you just see this hazy figure but as regards the frequencies of, of, a, of an entity or an intelligence a spirit or soul I don't think that frequency changes until something happens. Someone does something to, to, to move it on. Um, because I don't think the frequencies deteriorate over the years. But being not, not being a scientist or, or into that side of things, I'm not sure. I don't know. Right, right. To be honest with you. Well, so it all comes down to, and this is really what we've been talking about all night. What is the a book. ghost? What is a ghost? Uh, it's. Great job. Uh, uh, so the whole idea is, w we don't know. There's so many theories. You, you gathered them from a lot of folks yeah. in here. And um, it just came out literally like last week, right? Yeah. Which is exciting. 
talk to us. We've talked about stone tape. We've talked about intelligent haunting. Are there other? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's so many different sorts. Uh, do you know, that, so, well, you, you do, of course. Uh, about 40% of all ghost sightings Tell are them. live people. 40% of ghost sightings are live people. Camera two. Oh, that camera. Ah! <laughs> um, so 40%. 40%, 40% of, of ghosts of, of, of live people. Crisis apparitions are what, one of the big ones that, that, right. that, that um, soldiers actually yeah. um, seem to somehow be able to send their spirit, soul, um, back, essence back to mother the day before they died. Right. That sort of thing. Um, harbingers of death. Doppelgangers, uh, right? Doppelgangers. Yeah, sure. you, you doubles. Harbingers of death. Black dogs. Banshees. That, that they follow. I mean, if, you, if you're Irish and you've got O um, before your name, um, then there's ch every chance you've got a banshee, and it will travel. And many, many banshees actually travelled from Ireland across the Atlantic and are here now uh, in America with the Irish families. Well, there's certainly a strong Irish heritage here. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but these legends are... That explains my ex. Ah, thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> this, is what's, this is what's great about people yeah. everywhere. It doesn't yeah. matter where. We've got our legends. We've got our folklore. We've got our true history. Uh, and we also have uh, evidence that turns up now mm -hmm. and again that just puts us on our ear. Now, we're, we're running down to the, the very end here, but we've got, we've got a segment that we run each week, a, a paranormal clip of the week. Right. And this week, we're going to uh, get Ron Kolick from the New England Ghost Project I on the phone. Well. Yes, uh, we're going to get him on the phone here and see if we can uh, dial him up. It's ringing. Sit him on, you kill him, we chill him. Hey, Ron, can hey, you hear me? Hey, Jeff, how are you? Are, are you with us? Ron's with the uh, New England Ghost Project. He's going to talk about a clip. Um, you coming Jeff, through okay? Yeah, don't you think this is kind of dumb? It is a little dumb. Yeah. We're going to run Besides, this Besides, I want on-camera pay. We're, just, we're going to run this gag into the ground tonight. Yeah, we are, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ron Kolek. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Ron, talk to us. We're at the Wyndham Restaurant in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Absolutely. Take it over. This is like probably the weirdest photograph I've ever seen. Right. Um, and it's not even a ghost. That's the weird thing about it. The restaurant used to have empty boxes. They wrapped up as kiss Christmas presents, mm -hmm. and uh, they put them out as decorations, and they kept them on the third floor when right. it wasn't Christmas. And they would come in, and they would find them stacked and laid out, and sometimes even like this. Oh! Uh, <laughs> and so, okay. Now, we, now if you can leave, see, it's this, over, the, this it's over the stairs, minute. right? Leave this up for a minute, Andy. Yeah, yeah, over the stairway, right? So, okay, first of all, you'd need multiple people if you were going to do something like Absolutely. this. If you were going to fake something like this. But you were telling me there was something with space between the boxes? Yeah, yeah right. Actually, if, if you look really close and you have like X-ray vision, you can see there's actually space between the wall and, the, and each of the uh, presents. So they're not actually on the wall. There is a little bit of space. Stuffed between over the stairwell. So you'd need ladders. You'd need people. Yeah. Um, and, and someone comes in and finds this and clicks a picture. And holy cow. I mean, wh what do you make of this, Richard? Well, talk about making your presence felt. Oh, hey, good, good one. Great. Oh, oh. 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 I'm sorry. I, I mean, I was getting ready to rip this to pieces. Uh, when I thought it was a ghost photograph. That is <laughs> that's unbelievable. Yeah. I, I, fantastic poltergeist activity, yeah. in yeah. my opinion. Right. Definite poltergeist. Whether it's a dead a spirit or a person. Now, wait a minute, Richard. Going, I don't know. Can't be. I thought you had to need a little teenager running around for poltergeist. No. Nah. No, 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 no. Usually, are there any, are there any pre, -pu pre pubescent children in, in, in the Wyndham? No. No? Oh, OK. It's a restaurant now, yeah? It's a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, but so, I just wondered if someone lived there and they got kids. Oh, you mean ghost kids? No, no, real kids. But, you know, the energies from those kids no. cause things to happen. But that is stunning. Isn't that great? Yeah, I it, want a copy of that. Mm. Here's the thing. This kind of evidence comes in all the time. People get these weird photos, have these strange experiences. They tell us all about them, and it keeps folks like us going, doesn't yeah, it? Of course it does. We want to know, how does that happen? We want to know, how does all this happen? That's what we explore here each week. We have just run out of time. For more information on Richard Felix, visit our website, 30oddminutes.com. The new book is called What is a Ghost? We've all contributed. Thank you guys so much. Thank you very much. Great show. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah.